I'll explain a little bit uh, what's been going on in the community regarding the hepatitis C project. Everything started uh, in fall 2015 when, when uh, some of the staff went to Picagan for a hep C presentation. Uh, once there, we were all uh, shocked by the numbers. Working in the hospital, of course, I've seen a lot. I was asked once, would you like to see? He knew he was going to be living for a long time. He was uh, in his 30s. He was also hep, hep C, but uh, he was too far gone to, to receive the help. I was very, very surprised at what I saw. Uh, these drugs that they put into them, the needles, I actually saw the bones the nerves, uh, holes right through the, the, the skin. Such a kind man, he was very, very uh, polite. And he passed away not too long ago. And I asked him if I could share that story. And he told me not today, but someday. I'm sorry, I know. Um, so today I share his story. I. I uh, I pray for him, I put my tobacco down. And uh, there's many more like him out there. A lot of young people that need help. You need to hold out your hand and pull them up because they're already down. We need that. We were just using used needles, share our needles and what other our friends would be bleaching using our needles. I didn't like doing that. I told people we had hepatitis C and they still continued to use our needles and, and, and then you showed up and yeah, it was much better. <laughs> well, I'm glad you found us there and that you can bring us clean, clean kits. Un moral est important parce que dans le fond dans mon travail, c'est que souvent les gens qui, les gens qui vont consommer, ils font plus affaire avec le système. Puis mon rôle à moi, c'est de faire un pont entre, euh, c'est de faire un pont entre les gens et pour qu'ils puissent retourner dans le système, utiliser les services, euh, aller voir Isabelle, aller au, au centre de santé sur la communauté, prendre un rendez-vous à l'hôpital, prendre soin de leur santé. Our nurses are very dedicated on bringing programs. Uh, they know the community very, very well. It was a priority that we get something going here in the community as well. We had started uh, the treatment in about five years now. I would say that uh, talking about uh, the subjects is always the, the best way to get to people. The, the knowledge is the, the key, I think, to uh, fighting back on this illness. We started with the staff. Uh, a lot of the staff didn't know about the disease. Uh, didn't know also about arm reduction. So we informed all the staff to make sure that everybody was on board. So everybody's working on the same page. Before we test somebody, what do you think about counseling? Because, you know, if you're going to have a positive result, that we need to have some type of support, support for this person, for the family, because it's, uh, it's quite a burden. I believe that awareness is probably the first key in opening those doors to talking about hep C. After that meeting or that presentation, I started questioning my own health in terms of if I was carrying uh, the infection of hep C. So for my own peace of mind, I did go get tested. And I'm happy to say that it was negative. I have no antibodies. I don't have the infection. I think when other people see different very familiar community members being strong and openly talking about their their struggles, that it just kind of opens the door for other people not to be ashamed or embarrassed that things happen to everybody every day. It's not always a, a drug-related issue. It could be uh, uh, something like, like a baby mover is at risk for hepatitis C. Uh, if you've had blood products in the past, you may be at risk. I'll tell you the way that I felt when I first heard about hepatitis C. 
And I thought, oh my God, this could have big impact on my family if anyone ever got hepatitis C. Not knowing that, uh, you know, it's treatable and whatever. To me, it was a death sentence. And that's why I think education is such a big thing with, with hepatitis C. Uh, we have to get it out there that it's not as bad as you think. I find it was just like uh, with uh, AIDS, I guess, too. People, when it first came out, in, like big in the 80s and 90s, it was like you don't even want to touch them. And, you know, and then you get more educated about it. And that's what this is I'm finding is we're getting more educated about this. And, uh, you know, there's more people dying from this than AIDS now. Uh, leadership is really important with our services because without their support, um, to advocate and support the community on different needs and issues. If we don't have the leadership support, then we're kind of uh, backpedaling. Last year when we attended the Hepatitis C conference, we were there as students ourselves. The information uh, has really increased our knowledge uh, of what it is, how it is sometimes identified, how sometimes it is transported uh, from one person to another. That sense of community is still here, it still exists, and it's really strong, and it, it's getting stronger when we talk about the real problems. I think stigma around the hep C is uh, slowly starting to be decreased, especially um, when you spread understanding and non-judgmental um, supports around it, then I find that it's starting to decrease. People are coming now to get tested. Like I would say, uh, more elders or baby boomers are coming to get tested, so that worked. Um, other success is that we're now going into houses to meet those people that are using, just talk about everything and they, they trust us, so we trust them too. And we just share a meal and we're gonna be there whenever they're gonna need us. So. It's ongoing, I find, too. Like she has these little kits that that people can come and pick up, uh, like for, uh, I guess, who, people who use needles to, to use it clean, if they have to. We're 100% supportive of, uh, of uh, any prevention that'll help uh, stop the spread of uh, hepatitis C, for sure. <sighs> Good evening. Um, I'd like to uh, share a little bit about uh, my story my past and uh, my present and, and what's happening in my life right now. Um, <laughs> it's still very hard to, uh, to talk about, but I feel I need to talk about it because that, this is how I'm healing myself. Because when I, when I thought about you know, the project itself. It's not just the project, you know, the hepatitis C. It's where did that person come from to get to that point? Like there's there's a big, <laughs> big thing there, you know, that needs to, the truth needs to, to be told, you know? And um, I am very honest, I'm very raw, because that's how my life is. I had a lot of anger, mostly for my childhood stuff. So I was raised by my grandparents on a reserve here till I was about seven. And then my grandfather passed away, so I, I went to live with my mom. When I look at my life now, I could really see that change. Um, or just uh, things started to evolve for me that were, were not good anymore. There were so many abuses that happened, you know, in my life. Uh, physically, sexually, uh, emotionally, mentally, like everything. I was just an angry, angry person. And that was my life. It just headed into a full-time addiction. Um, lost my home, I lost my kids. Um, I lost um, everything. You know, I, I didn't know nothing to help Tammy. Today, I'm, I'm still trying to forgive myself. I, I go to sweats and I go on my own healing journey eh? and um, to forgive myself of what happened to her. And... A lot of people tend to give up on 
on their friends or family that have addiction problems. But my understanding today is uh, to be able to see these people with an open mind, not to put anybody on a label on him that he's a, a street person or homeless, uh, they're no good. Not to see them like that, but to see them as you, you see yourself. Uh, treat them the way you want to be treated. When I was using um, in Sudbury, they used to have a it was kind of like an old hippie van, I guess, and uh, they would come around, they'd had sandwiches and a needle exchange program. And so they came by one night and they're like, um, hey, uh, we're giving out 20 bucks. Uh, if you um, do, a, do a blood test, uh, we're trying to, uh, we're looking for, you know, people who use needles for to see if you have hepatitis C. Well, all we heard was they were giving out 20 bucks. <laughs> you know, so we're all like, okay, all right. And we're all big line up, you know. <laughs> we want the 20 bucks. So that's how I got tested. And uh, so because they always came around, they knew us, we knew them by hand. And uh, so one of the gals came back and seen me about, I don't know, a month later or something. and. And she's like, Tammy, can I talk to you in the van? And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. I said, you're gonna get me not 20 bucks? <laughs> but she didn't. And, uh, and she said, I, I wanted to let you know we got your results back and uh, you tested positive for hepatitis C. Upset um, at the cause of it, you know, what? Because Tammy was, wasn't like that, uh, what? her in her life I didn't choose her to do that you know uh, with drugs and alcohol and you know I had that problem and, but uh, it really hurted me to for her to have that that disease I didn't know nothing about it too much I had to um, uh, find out about it and, I thought she was doing great, you know, and then this happened. So, so I was very devastated, uh, but angry at drugs and alcohol that led us to that point. Yeah. I just didn't see how that would be possible to make it through that. And to try to live in my own skin. I just want to rip my skin off. I just, I just want to die. I sang this song to the grandmother moon. I gave my tobacco to her and I said, please help, help Tammy. She's my one and only daughter I have. And uh, yeah, so this song, <laughs> I hope I don't get emotional. It's been uh, a while. This strong woman song, when I heard it, I just got goosebumps and uh, I want that song, I said, for my Tammy, I can't go on anymore at the healing lodge where I was. I, I was a, a chef there, a, the cook, and uh, me and my friend went outside and she said, just follow me. time when I was um, really going through my difficult time, you know, in uh, my little padded room, I call it. Uh, that's where it, it began some kind of connection that I, I felt. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I, I know what it is now today. And it sounds tacky, but this light came in. This little box of light came in on my face. And this warm feeling broke my body. 
and the first time and I don't know how long I just cried like a baby for seemed like forever till I had no more tears left I was in the fetal position in, in that room I knew that something happened to me uh, at that moment that I could I could do this I really could do this I had the door open enough to listen you know after meeting with my counselor and stuff you know she says there's a native treatment center here she said is that something maybe you would like to go to like uh, and I said I've been to enough treatment centers I could run one myself and so I told her <laughs> and because uh, my attitude really sucked at that time <laughs> maybe get me their information I'll look through it so they sent me their package and when I read it, it Again, something stood out to me. And I thought, I knew I needed something. But when I went in there, that's where I think my recovery really began. Because I, I went there um, really open. And I thought, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be, I guess. Like, I walked in and um, my life started to change from there. Definitely culture plays a part of any healing, of any good way of life. If, if you're following the, the traditions of our culture, then I think you're well on your way of having a, a better life. I try to live by example. I mean, uh, over 25 years uh, clean and sober too. I follow four teachings that are love, honor, respect, and generosity. And uh, I, I bring that, like when I talk to the, the youth and the kids uh, in the schools or now I'm a powwow dancer, so I, I try to show them just again, like showing by example, like this is a, a good life to, to live. What we call around here is a mino bamad to zewin, and that translates to uh, living the good life. As a sweat lodge carrier, um, in the community um, that practice mainstream society religion, what they call it, uh, Roman Catholic. And it's uh, sometimes it's hard to, uh, um, to try and explain it to people that do uh, go to church. And I find that having an open mind, meaning uh, towards the community and the culture part and the religion that they practice is to accept it and see it and respect that their belief system as my own as well. That way people will start to uh, come around and start to ask for help. I was really running and running all the time from who I was, I didn't want to be native, I, you know. I made it to the Friendship Center that, that one evening, women's circle, and wow, did I ever feel good. I felt at home, I felt welcomed. I always never belonged, eh? So I started there with my smudging, learned all about that, I didn't know about that. Lots of, lots of things. The drumming, the women were so nice, the grandmothers that I met. That's where I started. That's what I always longed for, was from when my grandparents passed away, when I was seven years old, was that attachment to, to a mom that I didn't ever had with my own mom. And those Kokums would take me in their arms in the lodge uh, at ceremonies. And they would give me that nurturing. They would give me that love. They would tell me that I was important, that I was beautiful, that I was strong. They gave me life. They gave me so many gifts. Um, 
I never. The first thing that I received was my name from my teacher, uh, Langford Ogama. My Anishinaabe name is Menogabewuk. And then how that translates is good standing woman. And I looked at him when he said that to me and I burst out crying because I'm like, I'm not worthy of a name like that. He says, what day? You will see that in yourself. And I told him, no, never. What all of the things that I've done in my life, what I've done to my children, most importantly was my children. You know, it took me years and years to go into the lodge to ask for that healing, to ask for that forgiveness from my children. I still need to say it to them. You know, I still need to, to tell how sorry I was that I left them. C'est dur, mais c'est faisable. Puis c'est d'aller chercher les ressources qui vont les aider, d'aller chercher la personne en qui ils vont avoir confiance le plus. Ce que je souhaite, c'est qu'ils puissent être heureux, sans consommer, puis avoir une bonne adulte de belle vie. First time I met Tammy, it was a few months after we went for a meeting in Picagan, and uh, she was here for uh, another health issue, and uh, and then she was leaving, and I was looking at her chart, and I could see Hep C written in uh, her history. So I was like, Oh, can I ask you to come back? Today? I know you don't feel well, but I just seen that uh, you have a diagnosis of Hep C, and uh, I said, Do you feel comfortable of talking about it? So Isabel got me sent off, and she did the test, and I'm like, is that it? A little tapping on my liver, and you know? Uh, the treatment was one pill a day for 90 days. I can't express the, the gratitude that I have. Uh, to me, it was almost an acknowledgement of um, the work that I have done on myself during uh, this healing journey that I'm on. And I'm so grateful to my daughters, to my parents, to all the people that support me and uh, are very good to me. So, you know, I want to pass that message of hope to our community to the, our families out there that are struggling. You know, and I feel very honored to work in our community. I just love going to work every day and trying to do whatever I can, you know, to do the best that I can in any way. So miigwech. Thank you.